what I will do the next 10 minutes is give you a glance on what Bosch approaches on the electrification um, the, the technology. But I want to start with the market and actually, first of all, want to give you an insight on what Bosch's philosophy on this is. So when you think of powertrain solutions, and this is the organization that I'm working uh, for, is that we have a very diverse way of, of approaching this. We think that the uh, powertrain on the next couple of years will be still existing of combustion engines, gasoline, diesel. We will see a great share of hybrids coming into the market, uh, starting with mild hybrid 48 volt systems, uh, going more into strong hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and then electric vehicles, but also fuel cell, a uh, very important role, maybe more on the commercial vehicle side than on the passenger car side for the next 10 years as we foresee it. Um, but we believe in it all, and uh, this is what I um, uh, think is, is, is important to us, because we think that, like Raj said earlier, um, mobility is playing a huge role in our life, and it will continue to play a huge role. And um, if we do look at the, the last almost 20, 30 years, we had a year-to-year -year increase in personal, personal mobility and commercial mobility in the range between 3 to 3.5%, year-to-year increase, which led us into this CO2 uh, footprint that we're leaving with the earth right now. And if you just look at Europe, um, we in the transportation sector, uh, we increased since 1990 uh, the output on CO2 by roughly 1.1 billion tons. Uh, I think this is no longer acceptable. Uh, the CO2 uh, debate and uh, the climate acts over the world are foreseeing a different plan. So we have to act here too. Uh, and there is solutions out there that are carbon neutral. And I will get to those in a second here. However, I will also say from a, com from a combustion engine perspective, we have done our homework because uh, we are looking pretty good now in terms of emissions output of the latest um, vehicles that we put on the road. Uh, you probably remember the debate of nitrogen emissions here in the UK and in Europe. Uh, currently, we are only exceeding nitrogen limits in the cities in only 4% of all stations that in Europe are currently placed. And uh, we have not done a, from a, from a, a, let's say, from a challenge to, to a solution here. Um, Going now a little bit more into the power drain diversity, I give you a quick insight in what the market will look like, the way we think it is. And honestly, this is a bit funny story because 10 years ago, and that was in 2010, I forecasted the um, electrification share in the global market uh, by roughly 3%. And oh my God, was Bosch uh, being challenged with that number because a conservative German uh, company forecasting such low numbers and uh, why we are not uh, thinking that the electrification has a future. Honestly, it may, it, may, it may have been a coincidence, but we ended up, as you know, globally with roughly 4% of, of, of EVs on the road in 2020, so not much far off. And then uh, same share in hybrids and, um, and mild hybrids. So 444 is a number that is for 2020 that you can keep in mind, 4% deaths. 4% strong hybrids and plug-in hybrids and 4% mild hybrids. Now, this will change significantly through the CO2 regulations that we have in all regions, starting with Europe as being the strongest and toughest, um, and then following China and, and uh, North America. With the new elect president there, we see also there is a significant move towards uh, CO2 neutrality, and so we will also see that uh, something will have to change from, from, that, from that end of the world. So in 2025, we're looking at um, an increase to 11% of battery electric vehicles on the road, uh, roughly again the same share of hybrids, strong hybrid and plug-in hybrid, and roughly the same share of, of uh, mild hybrids. So you see already a significant change. And now if we are jumping into 2030, this picture makes your head spin a little bit because at that point, we're ending up between 20 to 30 percent of battery electric vehicles in passenger car area. Uh, also, the fuel cell technology will enter by that point by a small number. Hybrids are playing uh, still a significant role at that point, and mild hybrids are basically almost standard in some regions for supporting the combustion engine. Now, if you go back 10, 20 years, we never have seen uh, such a, a quick change in the market. So that will be 
a challenge for all of us in the industry, supplier industry, sub-supplier industry, for the competence that we bring in in the engineering, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you can just imagine that this is, is uh, going to be very challenging. Now at Bosch, uh, we, being, we believe the electrification is a necessity for CO2 um, countermeasure. Um, and that's why the battery electric vehicle market is forecasted for, from our side with these high numbers. What are we bringing uh, into this? We are actually have a very um, broad approach in electrification. And uh, we are starting from the smallest pieces that you can think of, actually currently heavily discussed chips. Um, we have um, semiconductors that we're building. Uh, we are believing that uh, silicium will be replaced by lithium carbide pretty quickly here because the efficiency is better. So we're working on that end. Going into building inverters, electric motors, entire electric axles, and uh, also um, actually integrating these electric axles then into uh, platforms uh, that we using as rolling chassis to put also on the market. So as you see, we are approaching this very broadly, and I brought you some some little mock-ups here that you can, can give you a glance on what we're talking about. So this is a, a one a scale one to four model of an electric axle. And um, the original one uh, here is uh, carrying 150 kilowatts with it. Uh, they're typically very good in the torque level, as you know. Um, and I will explain that a little bit to you, what we're seeing here. We have the inverter on the top side uh, of the electric axle. And on the back side here, the motor attached very closely to it. And then a gearbox that then transforms with typically a one to 10 gear ratio, the torque into the axle. And uh, here you can see the axle uh, that is producing then the torque to the wheels. Uh, why I did bring this model, the original one would weigh around 85 uh, kilograms. So not easy for me to hold that. Um, and um, it gives you an idea of how this will look. It is then integrated like this directly into the vehicle. I brought a second model that we will currently uh, building on it's a little bit earlier mock-up here it's a bit bigger but the scale is one to two uh, so now imagine one to two is not very big right and one to four people sometimes have problems to imagine the size of that but one to two is just double what I have in my hand this is the smallest axle that we are currently building uh, it is uh, starting around 50 kilowatts going up to 100 kilowatts it is much lighter, it's only 50 kilograms uh, when it's built and integrated. Um, and it is used in city vehicles, small electric vehicles, and uh, also used, and we're seeing some success here from our side in acquisition, as boost axle. What is a boost axle? It's a second electric axle, so the main electric drive is an electric axle, and the second one for all-wheel drive vehicles, well, you guys, uh, in the UK, no Jag or Land Rover, for example, has always all-wheel drive on the on the Land Rover side of things. If you want to go all electric, you need a second electric axle. So you could have put a smaller electric axle as a second boost axle. Same philosophy here, maybe even higher integrated. You see the inverter on top, the motor here on the bottom, and then the gearbox on the side of things. So at that point, I would uh, like to uh, ask the UK team to start a little clip, then we can see how this is going to get integrated into a vehicle. So this is the small uh, city EV that I mentioned just now. Um, this is the smallest electric propulsion system that we're working on. Uh, you see the charging system here. We have uh, charging system solutions, of course, also available uh, that I did not lean on too much just now. But uh, we have, of course, the onboard chargers. Here you see the EXO that I just had in hand, uh, moving this city electric vehicle along. Um, it is connected and in, uh, integrated in an overall system here. You see the battery in the middle, and then uh, in the back there was the uh, charger that we're having a closer look just now on. It is all connected to a uh, vehicle control unit that you see here uh, also in the vehicle. Uh, we believe in high system integration. We have been uh, working on uh, highly integrated systems since many, many years on combustion engines. Same approach that we do here. Uh, on electric vehicles. And now this I brought for the uh, UK folks. Uh, we're having, of course, not the small uh, city vehicles. We're also working on sports cars. As you know, 
uh, and I worked out of the UK uh, for Aston Martin from Bosch side and McLaren, uh, also Lotus. Uh, very exciting always is for us also the, the, the sports cars. There we have also solutions and here you will see uh, this idea of the boost axle that also being used on sports cars. Here's the control unit, the vehicle control unit that steers, so to say, the axle uh, that delivers the, the, the driver's request torque then to the axle. Uh, and in this case, as I said, uh, two axles in the system, as you can see here now, uh, the second axle in the front, which is the boost axle that I just have been describing. Um, so great solutions, I guess, uh, for, for the sports car um, industry as well. And this is actually our approach. We are, we are having solutions from small electric vehicles, like I've just shown, all the way into um, sports cars, all the way into commercial vehicles, light commercial vehicles and heavy duty trucks, uh, all that we do. Um, so what does what um, electrification mean to, to Bosch? Highly system integrated uh, solutions I already talk, talked about. We have also some successes. Uh, we are already equipped 2.5 million vehicles that are currently on the road with our solutions. So we're not a new starter in the electrification area. Uh, we have been working very much on cost innovation because we believe that only uh, cost um, optimized solutions uh, will be um, the future in this in this industry uh, because uh, we have to compete of course against the more classical powertrain in one way and we have a lot of new competitors coming in names uh, competitors just to Bosch names that we haven't even heard before uh, so we have to be cost optimized here and uh, we are working on the infrastructure I mentioned that earlier as well because the three things that make an electric vehicle at the end a success is the range that the vehicle has, the cost the vehicle has, and at the end, an infrastructure that it fe gets feed from. Uh, and all these three things have to come together. We are ac addressing as Bosch all three of these pillars uh, to make electrification success in the market. What we should not um, be hiding under the carpet uh, or um, sweeping under the carpet is, of course, it brings a a different challenge also into the industry. We, have, As I said earlier, we have to change our, our approach, we, how we're working on this, because at the end, uh, from a Bosch side, we see that um, from a workforce, we need much less people to bring these electrification solutions on the road than, for example, on a combustion engine. Combustion engine had many pieces, um, actually in total 1,200 parts that Bosch produced for combustion engines. And then an e-power drain only has roughly 200 parts. Uh, that the axle that I've just shown you is very simple. Uh, the simple gearbox is one electric motor and inverter. Um, so less parts, less parts needs less people, needs less workforce. And maybe a number I want to send you away with here that you also should think of. We're currently counting uh, for 10 people that we would need for diesel system to put on a, on a road to only three people in gasoline area, that always has been that way because it has been less complex from an exhaust gas after treatment perspective, to only one person in scaling that we would need on electrification for an e-axle. So you see that is also putting a lot of pressure on a company that comes more from the classical business. At the end, it only makes sense for us if we do this to have uh, a carbon neutrality that we, are that we are addressing with this because this is the only way why we're doing the electrification anyways. Uh, is for local emissions, uh, and I said already, the combustion engine has been improving much in that area, so it comes down to CO2. But currently, the industry, automotive industry, only looks at CO2 at the drive cycle itself. How much is the vehicle producing in CO2 in the drive cycle? Now, if you assume the battery is charged, and you go on a on a dyno, a test dyno. Uh, of course, the battery electric vehicle will be CO2 neutral and will be counted like that also in the calculation from a regulation perspective. But this is not uh, what we think from Bosch side is the right philosophy. You might have heard of scope one, two, three. Um, the drive cycle itself is actually only scope two. Scope one is how do we produce this vehicle and how do we um, develop the, the, the vehicle is also um, CO2, has a CO2 footprint. We are addressing this as Bosch since last year as CO2 neutral. All of our locations globally are CO2 neutral, uh, developing and producing. And the scope three is uh, what is the entire life cycle about it? Where do 
actually the energy come from? Uh, where is the energy used to produce parts that we then later on manufacturing and also the recycling all the way of end of life of the vehicle? Um, this also has to be looked at. So my, my last message here is if we want to address CO2, and that's why we do electrification, we should do it right. We should address the entire life cycle of such a battery electric vehicle, how it's produced, what kind of energy is it using, how efficient it is on the road, and at the end, also the recycling piece of it and end of life. And with this, Matt, I would hand back to you. Thanks very much for listening.